What's up today guys? Jimmy from the RT Clinic. Today we're going to do our best to show you a perfect mega code. The Mars reading 29. We need to get to work. Cut to the intro. Mr. Stan, my name is Jimmy from Respiratory Therapy. How are you doing today? Are you feeling short of breath? All right, we're going to get some vital signs on you. We're going to get your blood pressure. How long have you been feeling like this? Looks like the monitor is showing or taking a blood pressure right now. The monitor is showing a second degree. No, we have total uh, atrioventricle disassociation. So we're in a third degree heart block, heart rate of 30. I need to assess at this point. So this is a bradycardia. I need to assess at this point if it's stable or unstable. I'm guessing by the fact that he's short of breath and he's diaphoretic that he's unstable. We're going to confirm that by having a saturation of 88% and the fact that his blood pressure right now is 67 over 45. So I'm going to do exactly what I would usually do. I'm going to apply oxygen. So we'll apply three or four liters of oxygen. We're going to put an IV in, which he already has an IV, and we're going to put the monitor on the patient. So at this point, he is unstable, and I could consider atropine 0.5 milligrams IV. And although he is so unstable at this point, I'm probably going to go directly to transcutaneous pacing. So let's go get the transcutaneous pacer ready. On the LifePak 12, setting the transcutaneous pacer up, we use this area right here. So we see our monitor showing our third degree heart block, uh, rate of 29 at this time. So we're going to start by hitting pacer, and we're going to start at whatever the uh, team lead would like to start the rate at. We're going to go with 60. So we're going to leave that rate at 60. We're going to go down the current. And we're going to increase the current, the milliamps on the current, until we get capture. Now, currently we all we have right now we have the ECG on and we have the paddles on this patient. So as you can see, those are pacer spikes. So let's slowly increase the current. What we're looking for is after a pacer spike, a large bizarre QRS complex. Let's find it. It's going to be about 90. And there we go. So right now we're pacing at a rate of 60. We have good capture. We will increase the current by 10 to 20 milliamps just to ensure that if the patient moves at all, we will uh, not lose conductivity. So at this point with a pacer of 60, I'm going to reassess my patient. All right, so we're gonna assess Mr. Stan here. We see he has a heart rate of 60. I'm gonna retake his blood pressure. And the saturation is still low, so we're probably going to change the oxygen device. We might move him up to something a bit larger, probably at this time, probably a non-rebreather. So I feel that his pace rate is at 60. It's perfusing well. As far as I can tell, we're looking for a blood, blood pressure at this point. And I think... Stand, stand, stand. All right, shut the pacer off. We see his underlying rhythm is V-fib. We know for V-fib, we need to defib. So let's bring the team in, and now we're going to start CPR and set the defibrillator. Jeff, you're on chest compressions. Natalie, will you take the airway? So at this point, I'm going to charge the 200 joules while they're doing CPR. With defib, we want to defib. Now let everybody clear the patient. I'm clear, you're clear, everybody's clear. Shock delivered. You're going to resume CPR. All right, so we're going to resume CPR for two minutes. So during this first two minutes, we're going to make sure we have appropriate CPR. 
we have at least two centimeters of two inches of depth, um, and we're going to keep a rate of about 100. We're going to ventilate every 30, 30 to 2. It's been two minutes. All right, let's reassess our patient. Let's look at our underlying rhythm. We're still in a very coarse V-fib. We're going to defibrillate. You want to start CPR again for me? We're going to increase our joules. We'll go to 300. Let's charge. Continue to CPR while we charge. And now we're going to deliver shock. Clear the patient. Everybody clear. I'm clear. You're clear. Everyone's clear. Shock delivered. And now resume CPR. Now we're going to deliver our first basal presser. And we're going to give it an epinephrine, one milligram. Thank goodness we have a patent IV. So epinephrine, one milligram will be delivered um, with a rapid flush. And we also have our fluids wide open at this time. So one milligram epinephrine delivered. Continue CPR. And during this time, I'm going to think about some of my H's and T's. So let's think about some things that may have caused this. We start with our H's. We have hydrogen ion. Uh, so we've got a blood gas. Also hypoxia, hyperhypokalemia. Those are all part of a blood gas test. So we probably should get a blood gas at this time. Um, hypothermia. So we can try to get a temperature. I don't really think that's what this gentleman came in with. We can always get a temperature for that. It's been two minutes. All right, let's hold CPR. Let's reassess. We still seem to be in V-fib of some type here, so let's increase our energy. We want to start CPR again. We're going to charge the 360. V-fib means V-fib. All right, we're charging 360. Clear the patient. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. Shock delivered. All right, resume CPR. During this two minutes, we're going to continue to assess our other H's and T's but we're going to deliver our amiodarone, our antiarrhythmic, at 300 milligrams IV. So let's see, we have our amiodarone here. We would draw up amiodarone. It does tend to bubble a little bit, so we want to, we'd really like to draw this up early. And we're going to deliver this via IV. So 300 milligrams of amiodarone and antiarrhythmic delivered. So during this, this two minutes of CPR, we're going to look at our other H's. So hypovolemia, so we have our fluids turned wide open. Hypoglycemia, a really common cause for this in the hospital. So we'll get a quick finger stick blood sugar on this patient. Uh, we're also going to look at our other T's, tension pneumothorax. So do we have adequate chest rise with ventilation? Okay, we have bilateral chest rise. That's good for tension pneumothorax. If we suspect toxins, any trauma to the area, uh, also cardiac tamponade is kind of like a last ditch thing we look at. And then thrombus, which is kind of what we're thinking uh, because this gentleman did come in with some chest pain. So we're going to continue CPR for these two minutes. It's been two minutes. All right, let's reassess our patient. Hold CPR. We seem to be in asystole. We'll check our leads. All right, we're in asystole. You want to continue CPR? At this point, we're going to give our next vasopressor because it has been uh, three to five minutes since the last one. So that'll be epinephrine one milligram. We'll get epinephrine one milligram out. We'll give it rapid IV push. Via our IV, our fluids are still open. And then we're going to continue to look at those H's and T's. Nothing really has came back on that yet. Our blood gas is within normal limits. Uh, potassium is within normal limits also. So we'll continue CPR for this um, asystole for two minutes of high quality CPR. It's been two minutes. All right, it's been two minutes. Let's hold CPR. Let's reassess our patient. We have some kind of rhythm. We'll feel for a pulse. No longer than 10 seconds. I do feel a pulse in this situation. So I think we're in ROSC at this time. So return of spontaneous circulation. Um, is he ventilating on his own? No. Okay. We'll need to intubate this patient. So we'll intubate this patient. And we need to get a set of vital signs. Confirm that ET tube with waveform capnography, chest x-ray, bilateral breath sounds, and it is appropriate. 
We have a, a blood pressure right now of 91 over 54, heart rate of 91, saturation of 94, it's slowly increasing. We got bilateral chest rise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna order an EKG, a full set of labs, uh, including any kind of uh, cardiac markers. We're gonna increase, keep running our fluids. We may consider putting on an antiarrhythmic that converted this patient, which I would assume would be um, amiodarone. Uh, we're going to call, after the EKG, we'll get an expert consult, a cardiologist, to see if we have anything going on. I do not see ST elevation currently on the monitor, uh, although an EKG could tell us something a little bit different. Um, and then we're going to cons consider uh, targeted temperature management with this patient because this was a witness arrest and the patient's intubated at this time. So we're going to begin to cool the patient. If they have to go to cath lab, we can cool the patient there also. And then finally, a chest X-ray to verify two placement. So, how is it? 